Hey there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here. According to AFP, global CO2 will reach its highest levels ever in 2023, with no indication of those levels coming down anytime soon. Now, that's the word from Glenn Peters, the research director at the Cicero Climate Research Institute. Of course, they're looking at global CO2, but what about local CO2, CO2 in your immediate area? Now, increased CO2 levels in the home or office can lead to drowsiness and negatively affect cognition, decrease productivity, and in extreme cases, even lead to death. We're trying to avoid that. And now, decreased CO2 in your greenhouse can lead to poor plant growth. So yes, monitoring CO2 levels is important. And while our TVOX sensors will monitor CO2 as one of the many components that they will keep an eye on, sometimes you need a highly accurate, highly efficient, singular CO2 measuring sensor. Well, now we offer that with the new SparkFun Photoacoustic Spectroscopy CO2 sensor. This board relies on Infineon's Zensive PAS CO2 V01 for its high accuracy. How accurate? Within its measurement range of 0 to 30,000 parts per million, this module returns a max CO2 measurement accuracy of plus or minus 30 parts per million plus 3% of the reading, with maximum accuracy occurring within the range of 400 to 5,000 parts per million. It has an integrated microcontroller capable of outputting direct PPM measurements. These readings can be communicated via I2C, UART, or PWM. It can operate in three different modes, idle, continuous, or single shot. Its voltage ranges are via VDD 3.3, 3.0 to 3.6 with 3.3 volts typical, and via VDD 12, 10.8 to 13.2 with 12 volts typical. The IR emitter on the PAS CO2 requires a 12 volt supply, so we've included an AP3012 boost regulator on the board. This, plus the two quick connectors and broken net headers, mean that this board's footprint is a bit larger than our usual 1 by 1 footprint, or 2.54 by 2.54 centimeters. That's right, centimeters. And the pins are broken out to headers so that the user, that's you, can choose their power supply, choose their communication protocol, and experiment with the various configurable interrupt pin options. The board's operating temperature range is 0 to 50 degrees Celsius, and operating relative humidity range is from 0 to 85 percent RH. So, aside from making you feel extremely nerdy and cool when you can say you're using it in your project, photoacoustic spectroscopy sounds like it's incredibly difficult and very cutting edge, when in fact at its core it's relatively simple, well in theory at least, and it was discovered almost 150 years ago back in 1880 by none other than Alexander Graham Bell. He was able to demonstrate that a thin disk emanated sound when exposed to an intermittent beam of sunlight, which he created with a spinning disk with slits in it to let the light through. The energy that the disk absorbed from the light created a pressure wave, or sound. And he was further able to show that light outside the visible spectrum created the same effect. And that's where we are today. Infrared light hitting a surface, creating a pressure wave picked up by a microphone, photo, acoustic, spectroscopy. Now, one of our amazing engineers, Alex, has been working with this module, and there are a few things that we'll need to point out to you before you get started with it. The first one is that you won't be able to just order this, take it out of the package, slap it into your project, and expect it to work. Expect to get highly accurate readings. Uh, this sensor requires a week-long calibration period, taking measurements every 10 seconds, and for at least 30 minutes of that time, it needs to be outdoors taking measurements. Uh, you can see here where three of our sensors begin to go from chaos to calibrated. Uh, you can get all the information about this in the hookup guide. There's a link there to the automatic baseline offset correction and forced compensation scheme application note. Then, once the sensor is properly calibrated, you're good to go. Okay, so now we're going to do a little SparkFun science. You can tell it's SparkFun science because real science uses beakers. SparkFun science uses pint glasses. Now, everybody knows when you mix baking soda and vinegar, it fizzes all up, and it also yields salt, uh, I believe sodium acetate, plus water, plus CO2. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that chemical reaction, and then we're going to take that CO2, because it's heavier than air, it will sit at the bottom of the glass on top of the water. We'll dump that CO2 into this glass, and we'll be able to watch the CO2 level spike from somewhere in the 500s. Is that right? Hey, look at that. Ooh, about 600. From there, up to probably higher than this. So let's make it happen. Little Geek brand vinegar into our Spark Fun baking soda. Whoa, easy, easy. I'll give that reaction a moment to excite itself to where it needs to be. So it's certainly still mixed up, but there's probably 
precipitate of salt at the bottom will wind up with H2O in the middle, and sitting on top of that should be CO2. Let's see what happens when we dump that CO2 into this glass. That's heavier than air, so it should sink to the bottom. And what have we got? Oh, starting to go up, 4,200. It takes a reading every 10 seconds, so that's why we're standing here just up 32,000. So yeah, we've got some CO2 trapped in there. So there's our science experiment, Spark Fun Science. Don't try this at home, kids. I'm what you call professional. Now this sensor isn't a toy, and this board probably isn't the one you want to get if you're just looking to play around or dabble with checking CO2 levels now and then. It's a serious sensor and deserves a serious look. Uh, for example, researchers currently at MIT and Harvard have come up with an electrochemical process to turn CO2 into formate, which as we know can be used in fuel cells to generate electricity. And the process they've come up with is 95% efficient. That's amazing in a field where generally 10 to 20% efficiency is the norm. That's the kind of research and that's the kind of application that this sensor can be used for. So if that's what you're looking for, then you are looking for the new SparkFun Photoacoustic Spectroscopy CO2 sensor. Pick yours up over on our website, and as always, stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking! And science! <laughs> Infrared light hitting a surface, creating a pressure wave, like the new SparkFun PIS CO2, that's not what it's called, oh. spectroscopy. Dang, now I'm supposed to keep going, aren't I? Mm -hmm. No, no, totally try this at home. <laughs>